when Ruby was first born, she had a little bit of hair, but not a lot of hair. And then as she got older, she ended up with so much hair. So her hair is, is very thick, very luscious, healthy, beautiful Afro hair. And then year 10 was when we hit this brick wall all of a sudden at the school. So when she came home the first time and she said that a teacher had told her that her hair was too big and she was going to need to do something about it, we just brushed it off that day. But she went back the next day and the same teacher said the same thing to her again. And they also told her that if she continued to wear her hair like that, she was going to be sent home. And they told her to look on the website and she would be able to see the hair policy on the website. So she came home that day, we went straight onto the website and that was when we saw it for the first time, the rule which said about Afro style hair, including buns needed to be of reasonable size and length. I said to Ruby, that cannot be legal. It cannot be legal to have a rule which is just about Afro hair. So we checked up all the other policies of the other schools to see about the hair and none of them had a, a, a stricter policy as this school had. Straight away, we raised it as an informal complaint with the school, but they came back very clearly and said that they weren't going to change this rule, which is why we escalated it to a formal complaint. And it was after all of that that she started being sent home from school. Yeah, this was a um, very challenging part for Ruby and for us. There was times when it was very hard for us to get Ruby to go to school because she didn't know if she got sent to school, whether she would be accepted in the school with the way she had her hair set that day. We dreaded the mornings because mm -hmm. obviously to, you know, wanted Ruby to do the best she can, go to school and take in whatever, you know, the education that she needed to. But at the same time, it was very hard because I could just see my daughter kind of withering away in front of me. The timing couldn't have been worse, really. It started in year 10. We're still going on right up to her GCSE exams. She was actually sent home the week her GCSE exams started. Just as that was happening, Ruby received her year 11 yearbook, which is her memory for, for the rest of her life of her years in that school. Um, so it's got lots of pictures in there, all memories of that cohort as they've moved through from year seven through to year 11. When she got the book, we were on our way home from parents' evening and her phone started pinging. Her friends were all messaging her saying, Ruby, look at the book, look at the book. And she opened the book uh, as we were walking down the street and to her horror, they had used her year seven picture as her current picture in the yearbook. But the biggest change obviously was her hair because when this picture was taken was when she was straightening her hair. Now when she looks at that book and she sees that picture, all she sees is a school who not only discriminated against her, but then victimised her as well. So that was when the Equality Human Rights Commission more stepped in themselves and their legal team supported us and helped us process legally and, to be honest, emotionally what had happened. And unfortunately, it did end up having to go to legal action, but we did eventually settle out of court um, and managed to put it behind us really. We're very, very grateful that we have the Equality Human Rights Commission who are there to, to fight these sorts of situations. And you know, there might be another child somewhere who looks like Ruby, has hair like Ruby, who's 14 now, and her school might not do this to her because of what's happened to Ruby. We want people to learn from this. We want other children to be protected and we know that's what the Commission want too. It certainly changed the way Ruby's life's gonna go. And she wants to see other children and young people celebrating that Afro hair, rather than it being seen as something that has to be policed. <laughs>